Alright, this is Watty for Scotland, and you are watching Trucker Josh on TGV, Canada's favourite truck driver. Don't forget to subscribe and come along and enjoy the fun. We go. Let's get this show on the road there. All right. Just got to bring these things literally just down the road over here. Didn't quite make it yesterday before they closed, or before they went home. They closed at six, but their shipping guys go home at three, I think. And I got here at five thirty, so I had to wait here down the road. Very dusty lot. Head northeast towards Saskatchewan, 21 south. That's what I plan on doing, Karen. In 100 <coughs> meters, turn right onto Saskatchewan, 21 <coughs> south. right onto Saskatchewan 21 South. Straight down this road. Continue on Saskatchewan 21 South for eight kilometers. Eight kilometers, five miles that way. Got your stuff. Got your stuff right here for you. How do I get in here? Beautiful machines. Look at this. Your destination is on the right. Well, it's a smaller yard than I was expecting. But that's okay. It's big enough. Go in this side. Oh, lots of room. It's way, way bigger on this side. Okay. Lots of room. Well. Okay. Have we 
window photo. Those cars can get out if they need to. There's the forklifts that'll unload me. I got room on either side to get to the freight. Let's do it. I really love coming to these small towns on the prairies. Maybe because I'm from the prairies and I can sort of relate to everybody and across the board, at least in the small towns. Everyone's always so friendly and so uh, just a, sort of excited for the day. Maybe because it's sun shining and warm. Everyone's just soaking it all in the best they can. But everywhere you go, people are so nice and just willing to help you. It's one good thing about the prairies. It's, we have a really tight-knit community from Manitoba or southern Manitoba all the way through to Alberta. These prairie people stick together, I guess. <laughs> we get pushed around in other areas quite a bit, so <laughs> at least we have that. <laughs> we got each other. Okay. So what I do now is uh, I go inside, show them my paperwork, let them know I'm here and ask them if this is a good spot for me to park. And if it is, I'll start taking my straps off. If not, I'll move to where they want me. Then I'll take my straps off and wait for them to come grab it off the trailer and get a signature and we'll be done. Like I showed you earlier, there's not much left. Just two loaders and all of their accessories and parts are in these crates. So two uh, front loaders and two crates. A lot of campers out, lots of people out on vacation. If we're back in Rosetown. I didn't know this was actually gonna happen. I'm on my way up to Meadow Lake, and I come up to town here, and I see a, I see a Timmy's over there. So, oh, parking right here, and Timmy's over there. Sold, going to Timmy's. And I'm pulling into the lot over here and everything. I'm looking around, and I see the dealership over there. I'm like, man, that place looks familiar. I was just here yesterday. I'm back. If you remember, my sister's name is Rose, so it's her town. It's a very nice town, Rose. A very nice town you got going on here. Can't believe you haven't told me about it until, until now, though. I had to find out on my own. So I got this empty trailer. I don't know what this is on here. Look at this. There must have been a gash or something on my trailer. And they welded that on there, and now it's... Okay. It's not my trailer, but I mean, I don't know if there is a gash. Can we see underneath here? Is there a gash? Doesn't look like it, eh? I don't know what that's doing there. Weird, but you can see that some people have dragged freight along here. Look at that. Obviously, when they're unloading it, they didn't want to lift it up or they weren't able to lift it up so they just pulled it off the trailer and it just wrecks the aluminum <sighs> people you gotta be careful you gotta be careful if this is my trailer I'd be really upset if someone did that to my trailer so you know you gotta be careful with other people's equipment pick up my load later this afternoon. They load until 10 p.m. out in Meadow Lake. So they're waiting there for me. I'm just, I need a coffee for the road. I'll take a little break here, a little breather, and uh, we'll be back at it. And we'll get as far south as we can today yet. I'm hoping to get to like around Chamberlain again. And then tomorrow we'll deliver the lumber into Mackenzie, North Dakota, and then head home empty. That was confirmed today, so that's, that's the plan. I'll be home for the weekend. And then uh, it's Britt's birthday on Monday, the 25th. Chimmers. Extra large today. Two cream, shot of espresso. But if I get a large, I get one cream, shot of espresso. And if I'm feeling wild, I get an extra large of two cream and two shots of espresso. Now that's on special occasions only. Like the Queen's birthday. Let's get rolling. All and everyone else here has been rolling out already. Okay, yeah, we need to go back over there, back north. Nice truck. Very nice. How much? It's one of the magnets. One of those Borat magnets. Okay, I go out here. 
Oh, you're leaving now too, eh, bud? Are you going this way or are you going that way? I'm going that way. This is a busy street. Is this part of the driveway here? Why is it? Yeah, I think it is. Um, all right. to go that way as Karen says finishing each other's sentences are we now that's scary not into you like that Karen come on let's go no you wait your turn buddy you wait your turn I don't make the rules I just follow them second though that that noise we heard back there is making me very nervous I don't want to leave town without checking out what it was I'm gonna park here I want to make sure one of my tires didn't blow out or something if I can't get it off my mind it's not gonna leave me alone until I go and double check everything may as well check now before we get out there on the highway Oh, I'll mark this down as a load check, equipment check, whatever. Real quick. Oh, it was my tire. We got a flat. See, it's good that I checked. Shoot. Shoot, shoot. Shoot. Man, I just fixed a flat on that side. Now I got a flat on this side. Great. Well, there's a tire shop right down the road there, according to Google. So, uh, I'm just gonna limp it a couple blocks down here and go talk to them. Maybe it just needs a patch. Yay. Here they are. Just gonna park right out here. Kind of convenient, eh? Hopefully they can help me out. Fixing it right out here in front of the building. Got to it right away, real quick. It looks like they'll be able to patch it, so. Hopefully, anyways. I really don't want to buy a whole new tire. We just patched the other one on the other side. Ah. It is what it is. Look how dirty this truck has gotten already. Hey, that's embarrassing. Stop looking at my truck, it's dirty. Didn't take them long at all. Patched it up. All good to go again. Just gotta go pay the good people. I'll be on my way. That was uh, like less than an hour delay in my day. <laughs> Turned out pretty good. Not bad. And we're back on the road. We only lost maybe an hour in our day today. Not bad, eh? That turned out really well. 
I gotta remember that next time when I'm feeling like everything is going wrong and nothing's going right, that at least this time, you know, I got a flat tire, I heard it and realized it right away, and I was able to stop literally on the same road two blocks down and get it patched right away. They were slow when I got there, they had nothing to do, they were able to get me in immediately. An hour, and I'm back on the road. It was a huge piece, it wasn't a nail, it was a, it was like a pipe or a bar of something, almost like a piece of rebar, but it was smooth. It was a big long one about the size of a, like eh, it looked like a, it wasn't a nail, but it served the purpose of a nail for this. Either way, fixed it cost $98.79 Canadian, so $100. They're more expensive than KK Penner and Blumenort because KK Penner's patch job only cost me $73. They charged me $98 here. Mosquitoes. Holy mosquito. Yikes. It's insane here. I've never seen so many mosquitoes in my life. At one point, I'm pretty sure they picked me up off my feet and were carrying me away until I fought them off. Insane. Insane. That's one way to get us to work fast. I'll tell you what. Okay. We're loaded up. I'll show you the load somewhere else. I'm not getting out of the truck again here. I mean, that's a life or death situation getting out. Those mosquitoes, they will suck you dry of all your blood. There's so many, it's insane. Have I said that yet? It's insane. Wow, Meadow Lake. There's another one. Oh, he's up outside of the window. Oh, what a nightmare. Woo! We're loaded up. Let's, let's get out of here. Leave all those blood suckers behind. Man. And I live in Manitoba. So me saying that I've never seen that many mosquitoes, that's a huge statement. My fellow Manitobans, think of the mosquitoes we deal with. Now times that by about 353,000. Meadow Lake's level of mosquitoes. I'm lucky to get out alive. That's a lot of wood. Wow. So I have five hours, just under five hours left on my full day of driving. See how far that gets us. We have to stop for fuel too. Uh, I got a quarter tank. I think I'm gonna fuel up in Meadow Lake here. They have a Petro Pass truck stop. Or it's just a card lock. Grab some fuel so that I'm just set for the day and I don't gotta worry about it. I'm gonna fuel up in the States. I changed my mind, it's only 300 kilometers or three hours drive to Saskatoon. And then they got the big Flying J Travel Plaza there. I'll fuel up there instead. 
Petra Pass right over there, but the only reason I don't like fueling at those places is that they don't always display the price. You don't know how much you paid until you get your bill, like on my next month's reports. So it's very hard for me to keep track of my earnings and spendings if I don't know how much I'm spending. So I don't like that. A little Flying J. I got my rewards program there anyways that I like a little better. Maybe we'll take a shower there, I don't know. I've got to call my receiver. It says on Google that they're open till 10 p.m. But I gotta call and confirm that because I'm gonna be getting there probably like around seven in the evening. And if I can't get unloaded tomorrow, that's a problem because tomorrow's Friday and they don't, then it doesn't look like they're open on Saturday. <laughs> well, we got a bit of a, bit of a, an, an issue, an issue. Gotta figure that out. I gotta pull over here somewhere and give them a call. We got fantastic news when we made our phone call. They're open for receiving tomorrow until 10 p.m. on Friday. When does that happen? When have you ever heard that happen? 10 p.m. That is so awesome. So we're gonna get there around like seven o'clock or so tomorrow evening, get unloaded, and then start making our way home. Uh, probably get home Saturday, I'm guessing. And then I have uh, scheduled myself to go out Tuesday, I think. Monday, Britt and I gotta go into the city. She's gotta do her blood tests. Pregnancy test. We find out on Monday if the transfer took. We're here. Davidson, Saskatchewan. I'm gonna try to show you the grill the front of this truck in the morning. I'm gonna try to remember. Uh, if I don't include it in this vlog, it'll be there tomorrow. You gotta tune in and see that tomorrow because I'll, I'll show you what I mean when I say there are a lot of bugs on the prairies of Canada. And when I see guys further down south talk about the bugs on the front of their truck, I chuckle a little bit. You'll understand why when you see it. <laughs> anyway, we're here in Davidson, Saskatchewan. The day's over. I'm gonna have to rush tomorrow. I have an eight hour drive from here to Mackenzie, North Dakota, and I won't have much time to stop. I won't have much time at all. But we'll see what happens. Uh, tune in tomorrow. It's gonna be fun. <laughs>